Thank you very much. I'm going to speak about uh, the regional strategy that was behind for what Venezuela is suffering right now, because you may think that Venezuela is an isolated case, but it has a regional explanation. So the first thing I want to say is there are three ways in which Europe can contribute to end socialism and promote free markets in Latin America. The first way, socialism is socialism here in Mars, in Latin America, and in Asia. There is no way that you can help us by saying that socialism works in Europe, but in Latin America it doesn't because we have a culture where just socialism always gets corrupted. No. Socialism always leads to corruption, and first comes socialism and then corruption, because socialism gives absolute power. And what happens with absolute power? Well, absolute corruption. So what we need to understand is that socialism means the control of all the production by a small group in government. And that always leads to the same things, trade barriers, different rules giving privileges to some businessmen against other entrepreneurs that don't have those privileges, collectivism, crony capitalism, artificial oligopolies, insane labor regulations where the unions become way more exploitative to the employers than the people that are uh, supposedly giving those jobs. So we need to understand that instead of having the discussion of uh, inequality about material goods, we need to start talking about uh, equality under the law. If we are not all equal under the law, then the disasters of Venezuela happen. So what we need from Europe is that speech of understanding that socialism doesn't work. It didn't work in the Soviet Union, it didn't work in China, it didn't work in North Korea, it didn't work in Cuba, doesn't work in Venezuela, it wouldn't work in Mars because the way it is structured goes against human nature. It, it depends on humans not having rational uh, behaviors for their own well-being. So that's the first thing. The second one that we need from Europe is the message that Scandinavia is not socialist. It is insane that these dictators like Hugo Chavez, Nicolás Maduro, Rafael Correa, Mujica, Lula da Silva, the Kirchner, they all portray Norway, Finland, Denmark, Sweden as the socialist paradise. And the worst thing of all is that if you ask 10 Latin American young people if Scandinavia is socialist, nine of them will say you yes. And there are a lot of things that we should copy from Scandinavia, but socialism is not one of them. Scandinavia is always ranking on the top of the index of economic freedom and human liberty that the Cato Institute is now measuring. So if there's one thing that we should copy from Scandinavia is property rights. It would be absolutely out of this planet to think that a Swedish major will wake up one morning and say expropriate, nationalize your house. That just doesn't happen. So it is absolutely absurd that countries in Latin America that are in the low ranking of economic freedom portray Scandinavia as examples of socialism. But you know why this happens? Because the mixing of information also comes from Europe. Why? Because there's also this obsession with giving us aid instead of giving us trade. And the thing with foreign aid coming from Europe it, that, is that it finances the Marxist ideas, the NGOs that are against free market and that are against property rights. Let me give you an example. Most of people in Finland and Norway have no idea that their taxes they pay go to foreign aid for a Guatemalan NGO that is leaded by an, an indigenous Marxist leader, Bernardo Caal, who uses that money to be against hydroelectric power. Being Norway, one of the countries number one in hydroelectric power, where no one would think to close down a hydroelectric industry, they give taxpaying money to people in Guatemala that close down hydroelectric power. 
So if we are obsessed with this foreign aid given to Marxist leaders that are against property rights, free market, and the Western way of life, then we're not going to be able to prosper. And according to trade, the European Union is fixated that they should trade with Latin America in regions, in blocks. Well, that is just not possible, because the region that I come from, which is Central America, the five smallest countries of all our region, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Honduras, and Costa Rica, right now, two of them, Nicaragua and El Salvador, are ruled by socialism of the 21st century. So how can I negotiate as a bloc when I have two countries that are not willing to open to free trade? And for these three ways to work, you need to understand something about Latin America. I had two slides, uh, uh, two pictures, if, if we could put them on, please. The first thing is Latin America has always been ruled by dictators. Then uh, Fidel Castro comes in, and he is successful in making a Marxist guerrilla. In the moment that Castro comes in and he makes a Marxist guerrilla, all the countries in Latin America start copying and pasting that model. You had Marxist guerrillas everywhere, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Peru, trying to do the same thing as Castro, financed by the Soviet Union and with the intelligence of Cuba. 1989 comes, the Soviet Union collapses, and the left Marxist uh, wing of Latin America, the socialist uh, sectors, they are in trouble because now they don't have the money of the Soviet Union to keep on going with these violent guerrillas, but they still want to come to power. So what do they do? Well, Fidel Castro gathers together with Lula da Silva, and they form the first Forum of Sao Paulo. The Sao Paulo Forum is a parliament that every year gathers together to further on the socialist agenda. And they start working on 1990. In 1998, they put their first president, Hugo Chavez. And that was a relief for Cuba because the money that the Soviet Union was lacking to give, the oil of Venezuela started giving. And now that the oil prices are coming down, they are hoping for Colombia to advance on the agenda to give FARC, the Marxist guerrilla drug dealer of Latin America, places in power. If this happens, we're going to have the first narco-socialist government, which will mean that the money of drugs is infinite. It doesn't depend on the market like oil, and then you have another socialism of maybe the 22nd century. So what we need to understand is this regional strategy is not only put it in place in Venezuela, it has been put in place and tested in Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and the places where they haven't governed, they have people who are waiting to come to power. When we understand this, we also understand that when the Berlin uh, Wall fell, and communism was a thing of the past, in Latin America, we voted for the so-called neoliberal governments, the right-wing presidents that were going to open the market. These people gathered together in the Washington Consensus, and they promised that they would give us free market. What did they do? They privatized everything. They privatized electricity, trains, radio stations, but they didn't liberalize them. They gave them as oligopolies and monopolies to their peers, and this created crony capitalism. But for most of the population, the one to blame was free market. I don't know if we can now put the picture, please. For the people, what is needed to be blamed is free market, when free market has never existed in Latin America. So it's always blaming the government, but expecting more government to come in and solve the problem, like this picture shows here. So what happened then? People started voting for socialism of the 21st century because they were going to uh, you know, fix the mess that this crony capitalist did in the 90s. Venezuela was going to be the promised land. Caracas was going to be the New York City of Latin America. So what happened? All these people get in power, Chavez, Lula, Correa, Evo Morales, and instead of finishing with the privileges, the crony capitalism, the oligarchies, 
they become even worse. So why is this good news to us? Because people in Latin America don't know what to do. They tried with the right wing, and they think that too much of a free market failed, and then they tried for socialism of the 21st century, and it turns out that it didn't end poverty, it multiplied it. So right now, it's a great and excellent opportunity for people like us, for people who really defend liberties and freedom, not only economic liberties, but also individual liberties. Because in a moment where there is frustration to the left and to the right, and everything has been tried, and all of them are statists who want to control the economy, is great news for people like us who want to defend freedom. The examples given here from different regions of the planet demonstrate that freedom works. So what we need to input from Europe to Latin America is the right messages. Those messages include that Scandinavia is not socialist, that we need trade more than aid, and in order for institutions to follow up, it's not about material equality, it's about equality under the law and the rule of law. Thank you very much. Thank you.